Ready to get creative today? We are going to make our own painting tools using cotton swabs. Oh yeah. There's different ways that you can design them, use them. We're going to take simple cotton swabs, tape, cardboard, and our imagination and make some amazing tools. Let's go. I have everything I need to make my own cotton swab painting tools. It's really fun to do this. I was being extremely inventive and actually uh, being very proud of myself sometimes by some of the unusual things I made. Let me show you an example. This is our basis for our painting tools. We need rubber bands. I have regular ones and I have these little tiny ones that you can put in your hair. I'll just put a few of those down. I have corrugated cardboard. I have our thin cardboard that we saved from the boxes, the food boxes that we saved. And then I have masking tape. Uh-huh. Before I start, I want to make sure I pull this. So, And then the um, cellophane tape doesn't hold as well, but since these tools, you'll see when I demonstrate, they're going to last not as long as a brush would. So you might need to make a new one. I'm going to have several made before I even start my painting. All right, scissors. We need the scissors for everything. Okay, invention number one. I took a cotton ball and shoved it in the middle of my Q-tips to create a round. So when I put this down, it's going to make a circle. So I have a cotton ball. I take several of these. I will demonstrate as I show you what I made. This one was not as easy as the others. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go with 10. Let's go with 12. I have lots of Q-tips. So I have my Q-tips and I'm gonna put my rubber band around the center. Not super tight and don't get your finger stuck. Open it up, five, six on each side. Put this in the center. Oh, wait a minute, Miss Linda did this last time. Start out with half. It's going to be easier to pull that rubber band up. Position your Q-tips the best you can. You can actually, and this takes time, you know, just be patient. Once you're done, it's gonna be like lickety split, push it down. Squeeze it in. This is great if you're doing flowers or say a tree and you want the bushiness to go around the top. All right, that is not wide enough. And that's what I found out last time. So I'm gonna take another and stick it in there. Oh, there we go. What happens every time you do that is you spread these out. You want them to be level or flat so that each one touches the same way. All right, one more. And this is why I didn't do my rubber band tight. I am going to pull this and give it one more twist around to hold it securely. There you go. Oh, almost. You have to play with it. And each time you press it, we're going to see what type of a design this gives us. Say if you're doing snowfalls or a, or a, um, what are the milkweed when they, the dandelion. That's, that would be perfect for that. All right, we did this. Now, I have the blob. This is two Q-tips, and it was a half a piece of cotton. And what I did is I just secured it. In this one, I actually used the cellophane tape. Sometimes it's better to get a little piece off before you start. And I made sure that I got that on the big cotton swab. So if I wanted to do, say, clouds, Miss Linda's, there we go, squeeze. This is what I meant about the cellophane. It doesn't grab the same way that our um, masking tape does. But since I used it on the first one, the good thing about cotton swabs is you can pull them and yank them and fluff them. And then you have your blob. This one came out much better. In fact, maybe I should do this. Let's just chop the top off like this. See, if it doesn't work out the first time, figure out a way to fix it. Look, boom, they're like twinsies. All right, this one is very simple. 
you just take four or five of these together. I've used these in my classes before, and I thought I was like a genius for coming up with this. Well, I found out that I'm not the only, uh, only one that's thought of it. So this one has five. Ooh, that was a good grab. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, the little rubber bands for this work really, really well. It's amazing how wide these things go. They're designed, I believe, for hair. And then you're going to pat it down so that they're flat. All right. And these are really interesting. This one is taped to a piece of cardboard that we saved. Couldn't think of the word for a minute. And then this one, I'm going to show you. You can cut the ends off if you like, stick them in. They're not very s stable that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a little piece. This is different than this one, but they're both going to be really good for straight lines if you're doing landscapes or just an abstract piece of art. And see that little hole in there? I'm going to push. All right, push it in. I'm gonna skip, let's skip two. I'm gonna twist this so I have a better eyesight. Hopefully you can see, oopsie. Push too hard, twist it again. If you don't succeed at first, you try it again. Push, ah, there we go. Now you know that these are going to be super stable. There we go. This is a very tight piece of cardboard. You can keep putting those in over and over again for as long, say if you've got, you're planning a certain type of drawing. You can put four or five or six on this one. I did four on each. And see, this is a little wider cardboard than this, so it was a little easier to push it in. Let's count our many tools now. We have the taped, which gives you a long line. This is if you want to have space in between your paint, but you also want it to be tight. This is going to show us, and I'll show you in a moment, that you can just do dots randomly. You know, pointillism and Soro and many, many, many artists use pointillism. I bet you they wish they had some Q-tips. It would have made life a lot easier. This is our big cloudy blob. This is going to be our circular one. And I can actually see, I need to pull that one up. If you push it down and pat, you're going to get all of them on a level, on a level to the paper when you push it. And then our standard doodly daddly one. Do I have everything? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. All right. Time for color. Push these off to the side. Get some paper. Let's test out our tools. Let's see. You know, I am most curious about this. Actually, this could be a two-sided one. Let's try it. I'm always game. I'm going to dip, not dunk. Do not dunk. Dip, dip, dip. And actually, let's see. Let's see how it works. I'm going to put it off to the side first. The first one is going, you might want a piece of paper on the side. All right, let's see what we can create here. As you push, do you see you get more of that circular? So you can graduate it from a deep, intense tone up into a very light one. Now let's see the ones that are separated. Let's go, let's go yellow. See if I can do. I am dipping, dip, dip, dip. You see there's not a lot on there. That's what we want. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Do flowers, a sky. These are already flat. Can you see that? They've flattened out. So you're going to get a different degree of print with it. This one, I'm going to go white. Let's go white over the blue. Oh, it's snowing. There we go. Now these you can see, these have direct circles, which is more pointillism than the other. So let's go over here and just do some light blue ones. You never know what's going to happen with your colors. It's actually like the blue is in the center and the white is surrounding it. That's very cool. There's two. Now let's do some straight lines. Let's say, 
I'm doing buildings. I'm going to go black. I dipped. I did not dunk. Let's see how our straight lines go. Oh, yeah. Nice. And as you can see, they get a little loose and some of the cotton goes off. But, you know, that gives it texture and character. Um, oh, I want to do another color. Let's see. I'm going to dip, dip it. Mm, yeah, I'm just going to dip it in the red. I don't mind contaminating my colors. I just want to see what happens. And I'm going to go in a different direction. Oh, yeah. See how it all starts to come together? These tools will help you create things quickly. All right. Mm, haven't used red yet, so let's do the dunk of red. This I've never used before, and I can tell already that it's going to be too much paint. So what I'll do is, here, I've got one right here. I'm going to do this and get some of it off because I want some sort of design from it. All right, this is the roller. I came up with a name. You're going to roll this. This would be great to do just these details. Say if I was doing a fire and I wanted it to look like a fire. That's actually a beautiful texture. I'm surprised and happy. And then we have our long one. This one, hmm, turn your paper. I want to see if I can come up with something here. So I'm going to actually dip this in the red and then the blue on this. I'm actually trying to get it, I tipped it so I didn't dunk it straight in. So I'm going to see if I can get a purple out of this. Now these are close together, but again, there are going to be things that you want to create with these painting tools that are a little more realistic, I guess would be the word. Kind of could make a bug out of this, all those legs I just created. Um, let's touch this. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit and dip it in the white and let's see what happens. Just wanna, oh yeah, that's pretty straight. They're a little too close, but if you are using something that Every time you go over something with a white, you're going to get a really cool look at that. You can do anything with these. In fact, next lesson, we're going to actually create our own painting with our handmade tools. So after you make your tools, join me for the next class. So everyone has their tools. Get creative, get wild, go outside the box, so to speak. Have your swabs ready, all your other pieces, your rubber bands will really help. We're gonna use these, so get them ready. Our next class is going to be all about using these.